So welcome to the last lecture of today, which is simultaneously my second lecture. I like to see people who survived the first, how much, four lectures, yeah? Uh, let me start with a recap of lecture one, pointing out the important piece of it. First of all, the science of the research program Nine House Geometry studies manifold equipped with Nine House operators, and no other structure is a priori assumed in theoretic st study. So the structure is one one made one one tensor on the manifold such that it Nine House torsion is zero. The goal of theoretic study is to, 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 to prove some results about nine house operators, and if we did get some results, for example, we describe locally diagonalizable nine house operators. This is uh, Hunter's theorem. The simplest version result I gave is actually due to nine house himself. In application, one uh, rarely off takes partner structure. So additional structure, which such that it's related by some equation to nine house structure. So in lecture one, as a partner structure, I took geodetic compatible metric G. There was some equation, which I will repeat today when I will need it. And this equation can be solved in some sense. For example, we obtained, uh, we obtained uh, proof of Leibniz's theorem and also obtain global results on uh, compatible structures such as G is Riemannian metric on closed surfaces. I spoke about topological result and proved that closed surface must have uh, positive or non-negative actually Euler heuristic in this case, but in fact the description which I give can be slightly improve to give a complete description of all project level metrics. So similar point was the case step of the proof. Uh, so the kind of overall goal of this lecture, of course, I will give also some other partial result is more complicated segregate characteristics. So in uh, lecture one, I spoke only about diagonalizable case and now, and actually eigenvalues of our nine house operator were real. And now uh, the eigenvalues can be multiple. So we do have journal blocks and also can be, uh, we have, we, we will have complex eigenvalues. Uh, one of the motivations that are of course many also coming from the uh, inner nine house geometry, but motivation in view of application is if you study a non riemannian uh, matrix, and then the question about projective equivalence of non riemannian matrix is also a reasonable question, in particular reasonable in the context of relativity, then the uh, corresponding 1, 1 tensor L, which as we know from the previous lecture is automatically nine house uh, operator, may have complex eigenvalues and general blocks so uh, a small goal, which would I be in the audience and listen, I would always uh, would like to have a goal in mind. A small goal will be to speak about uh, non-Riemannian, so pseudo-Riemannian of any signature projectively equivalent matrix. Uh, so as in the previous lecture and also in the next lecture, I first start about the theoretic part, this will be this will be a general principle which will apply to today, but also in many lectures. Then go to club complex eigenvalues, then go to journal blocks, and every time, as example, I will consider geodesic compatible metrics. And if times allow singular points, but I believe there will be no time for it. So let us go for it. Uh, this is the thing which I put in the beginning, in the beginning of the lecture, in particular because I want this part to be understood, we return to this part next, next, and next time again. It is a, not very hard to prove. I will not give a proof, will not give a proof because of time, but statement which appears to be, it is a principle, rather principle than theorem. It appears to be 
very effective in my situation. So this letter, I think it's called she, it's Greekish, Greekish letter, it always will de de define Hartrisic polynomial. So we take Hartrisic polynomial of my operator and P is a fixed point. And suppose one can factorize this polynomial in the polynomials in the product of two other polynomials such that uh, these points, these polynomials have no common roots. Uh, mutually prime decomposition, how would say? So no root of she one is the root of she two, another way around. Uh, it is a condition at one point, but because of standard application of this fun theorem, one can extend this factorization in some neighborhood such as extension, so the polynomial she one and she two are smooth, one can consider them to be monic, a linear coefficient one. Then having this factorization, one can see two distributions. One is we plug L in she one, and you know it is, you can plug matrix even one, one tensor in, in polynomials, well-defined object, and this guy has a kernel which is the uh, degree of uh, she two, so uh, of she other, yeah? And this, we get to distribution, one is a kernel of this with one, another kernel with i equal to two. These are two uh, transversal uh, distributions. They give a well-defined smooth distribution and they provide natural decomposition of the tangent bundle. The theorem is as follows. So the previous kind of discussion can be applied to any operator. Now L is assumed to be ninth house operator. Then the first statement of the theorem is that the distribution are integrable, so simultaneously integral. One can find the corner system such that first distribution is where the second part of coordinates are constant, and first distribution is where the first part of coordinates are constant. This coordinate system will be called adapted. I call them X and Y. So the second distribution is these changes, they are constant and other way around. Then in the adapted coordinate system, A is block diagonal, such that each block depends on its own coordinates, and in particular, it implies that it also is nine house operator. So in words, uh, having splitting at one point, so having factorization, we do have splitting in one point, we have splitting locally, and it is really local splitting because this depends only on first core, on its own coordinate, and this depends only on its own coordinates. So uh, I said that she uh, here will always define uh, Harris polynomial. Here it was factorization, but the factorization, the letter is correct because she one is just his, uh, uh, his polynomial of L1, and she two is hydrogenic polynomial of L2, it is automatic, automatically the case. Uh, one can iterate this construction, so split L1 in two blocks provided L1 uh, has spectrum which is not, I mean, has non-trivial spectrum, more than one element in the spectrum, and so on, and split the operator L in the rec sum of nine has operators such that each of them has either a single real eigenvalue, it may have maybe journal block, but single uh, eigenvalue, or a single pair of complex eigenvalues. So in the local study, because of direct, direct product is kind of thing which we can ignore, we can always think that our nine house operator has one or two complex conjugate uh, eigenvalues. Uh, this is a very strong result. Let me demonstrate it. I will demonstrate it many times during uh, my lectures, but let me demonstrate it reproving with its help the result which I already mentioned. And it is theorem of Hantes. So L is now again uh, a semi-simple, so diagonalizable, is uh, supposed to be nine house operator again. 
And uh, I again assume that eigenvalues are real. And then locally in the neighborhood, Alice block diagonal, actually in the neighborhood of almost every point because I don't want the eigenvalues to be forked. Block diagonal such that its block is identity multiplied on function which depends on its own coordinate. So the theorem which we in particular used in the proof of Levitch with a theorem, and now I show that this direct simple consequence of the splitting principle. So we consider the following decomposition of the polynomial, just one is where we have lambda one. So it is just decomposition in the product of, uh, it's a factorization product, yeah? So the multiplicities because the uh, uh, eigenvalues are uh, not assumed to be differently, different. It is admissible, provided lambdas are different. Uh, then we the this coordinate system such that L is direct product, and this is written in the coordinates, in the coordinate, it is just what, what, what stays here. Now each LK has only one eigenvalue because it's diagonalizable, it's pro pro proportional to identity block, identity matrix of response dimension with this eigenvalue. So uh, this kind of theorem is a direct corollary of uh, splitting principle. I think I already pronounced this consequence, but since I will use it later, let me pronounce it once more. In all local study of nine hash operators near point P, one can assume that P, at P the operator L has only one real eigenvalue, sorry for misprint, or a pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues. Uh, so we reduced our study to the case when eigenvalue is one, and let me uh, start the further study uh, assuming that eigenvalue is one locally and the matrix, the operator is actually journal block, conjugate to journal block. Uh, I will first formulate the only known result in this case. Uh, I like the reference to Thomson 2002. Uh, with some effort, one can find this reference in Turiel, but it's really not no 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 fun to to understand uh, uh, this uh, reference in Turiel. It is the following statement: L is assumed to be nine hash operator, so both Thomson and Turiel has this assumption. An additional algebraic assumption is that it is conjugate to journal block. I emphasize here eigenvalue is constant. Yeah? So the additional assumption, which I will not use, will not uh, have in my results later, in our result later, is that eigenvalue is constant. Then there exists a coordinate system such that all components of L are constant, and therefore by linear transformation of the coordinates, one can simply make the uh, matrix of L to be the canonical journal block. It is what was proved before, and what I dropped on my screen now, it generalization of the result to non-constant eigenvalue. So difference between setup of this theorem uh, and this one, a small theorem here, it is uh, due to BM, BKM, Boltzmann of Kanyaev and M is phase for me. So, uh, well, assumption are uh, as you expect. So L is uh, nine house, algebraic and generic, this condition, uh, this uh, I introduced before, the angle values do not bifurcate. So in this case, they do not split, so it's not, yeah. Uh, and similar standard journal log, but eigenvalue can be different. Then in a certain local coordinate system, X, the matrix L takes the following form. Uh, so empty places are of course simply zeros. I don't know whether you can see the, the form messy or maybe not. It's, it's, it's okay, it's okay, yeah? Because uh, first of all, uh, the freedom is just choice of one function, it is lambda. It depends only on one variable. I call it lambda because it is also eigenfunction of the separator. 
And what stays here, the entries of the, so here stays one. And what stays here, the entries which stays here, are given in the terms of lambda by this formula. Uh, there is some freedom in the game, so we can still change coordinate system. And for example, in the case if the derivative of lambda with respect to, uh, sorry, should be xn here, sorry, it's just, the derivative of lambda with respect to xn is not zero, one can take it at, as one of the coordinates, last coordinate, keeping the other coordinates the same, and the form will keep the form, the, the, the same form, but lambda will be xn, and lambda derivative will be one everywhere. So the form will be very explicit. So we again, as in the uh, diagonalizable case, in the uh, case with n different eigenvalues, which are non-constant, see that essentially there is one formula for nine Hertz operator. I mean, he, uh, algebraic assumption here is that we have uh, only one journal block. Sorry? I think the answer is no matter, but I don't understand the question. So uh, this one is nine house. Uh, so uh, if here we have here lambda, it doesn't matter. If lambda is equal uh, to x1, then uh, you, uh, it's, it, it, it is either, it is near, as near the, eigen, near, so then eigenvalue x, x uh, the lambda eigenvalue is precisely xn, so it's near the point where the nth coordinates is equal to our fixed value. So uh, actually, if you take nine hertz operator and add uh, identity operator to it with any constant multiplied, it's still nine hertz operator. So uh, the eigenvalue is not important, at least in the, at one point. So it gives an uh, answer in the case of general block, and the remaining, well, one of the remaining cases is nine hertz operator with complex eigenvalues. So uh, I think, uh, they were discussed partially in the uh, as questions in my lecture yesterday. And uh, one of the discussions were related to the called so-called Nirenberg Newlander theorem, stating that if uh, our nine house operator is almost com complex structure, then it is immediately a complex structure. It is Nirenberg Newlander theorem, what I give now is generalized version for any nine house operator, not necessarily uh, with the property that the square is minus identity. So suppose L is as usual nine house operator and assume it has no real eigenvalues. Let me comment it. Globally, of course, it's a big uh, restriction, but we will see that it's not very big restriction as you, as you may have impression right now. And the second comment is that locally at a point, one can split out all real eigenvalue and stay only with the complex eigenvalues. So the local theory, it is perfectly uh, legal assumption. And for global, it is illegal now, but you will see that it's still legal. But it would be non-trivial result. Uh, so then the first statement that M is a complex manifold with, a, with respect to some complex structure, J, J naturally const, uh, constructed by L, naturally associated to, 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 to L. In fact, this J is some real analytic function of L. Yeah? Real analytic function of one, one tensors are well defined. In this case, it would be the case. Uh, second, L is complex holomorphic tensor field with respect to J. What does it mean? Uh, complex holomorphic means two things. First, it is commute with J, and second, all its entries 
in the complex coordinate system are holomorphic functions. So uh, the, that means that L can be written in a complex coordinate in this form. So it is kind of small letters. And the difference between small letter and big letter, which I uh, discussed in more details later, is the dimension here goes up to n, the co complex coordinate. This L small, ij, is n times n matrix, so our manifold is to n dimensional because it should have uh, even dimension because, uh, I mean, that one, that n are complex coordinate. And third condition is that what we call complex and torsion of L vanishes. I don't want to give a conceptual definition of comp complex and torsion. The definition is a coordinate is here. And to discuss this definition, I jump to the next slide and take this formula with me to the next slide. Uh, it is a very good question, with, uh, which I don't, did not want to answer, but since you ask, yeah, uh, it is not trivial result. And the trivial result is uh, the following. That suppose uh, we have a domain, so this is our C, and suppose we have a domain which is symmetric with respect to uh, complex conjugation, yeah? I formulate, let, let me assume that, uh, well, suppose we have any domain which is symmetric with the complex, let us assume that it does not approach this real line, yeah? Uh, then there exists a function which is real analytic such that the function is equal to i here and minus i here. Is it trivial? Is it not trivial? No, I mean, this is kind of strange, yeah? Because would, would it be connected? There is no such function. Analytic function are usually continuous. But it's, it's, it's indeed true. One can make sense of it. It's called Margulian theorem, yeah? And it is. Now, if you take our non house separator L and plug it in this function, you get the complex structure. And for any real analytic function, f of L in ice house operator is separate statement, yeah. Any, any polynomial and therefore any real analytic function, f of L is non house operator. Uh, well, there may be no eigenvalues, it's just bad sync, yeah? But a very good question, of course, yeah? Uh, maybe let us start from the beginning. Uh, if you have L, one, one tensor, can you say what is L square? Yeah, great. Uh, well, it is just square of the matrix, yeah? And then, uh, can you say what is power series? Yes? Now you should, should speak, think about uh, convergence of power series. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. And convergence is of course not trivial sync. It converges provided uh, the, convergent, the convergent radius lies, in, uh, spectrum lies in the, in the convergent radius, which is the case if the function is simply i here and minus i here. No, oh, it, it's, it's indeed very clever questions. It's indeed non-trivial results. I did, did not believe it for the first few months. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Uh, this is uh, the form uh, of uh, complex nine house torsion, yeah? And I took it with me in the slide because I want to compare with the formula of the nine house torsion real one. And yet you see the formula the same, which is of course cheating because uh, here the repeating index runs from one to N, the complex coordinates. Here the repeating index runs from one to two N, the real coordinates. But formulas are just the same. And actually, if you work with holomorphic coordinates, the rules of differentiation and the rule of uh, arithmetic rules are the same as in the real coordinates, yeah? So, which means, uh, so the difference, I just wrote it here, the manifold is even dimensional. Here it's two n-dimensional, here it's two n-dimensional, but the coordinates are complex, so we have only n of them. Uh, the formulas are the same. And since algebraic differential, differential manipulation with homomorphic functions formally coincide with that of real functions, any result which is proved for real nine house operator using differentiation, algebraic manipulation and solving of ODE survives. Which means nine house operator L with only complex eigenvalues is given by the same matrix as for the real case, but in complex coordinates. It is uh, the question about Hunter theorem. It survives, but in complex coordinates. It's a question about journal Blolan case. It survives, but in real coordinates. Let me go to global application. It is a theorem. Suppose L is non hertz operator. Global means our manifold is closed. And suppose that our L has at least at one, one point, uh, a complex, which means non-real eigenvalue, yeah? It has conditioned one point. The statement is then this number is eigenvalue of L with the same algebraic multiplicity on the whole manifold, yeah? So complex eigenvalue on closed manifolds are constant. It is global statement, local is wrong, simply because we saw examples, yeah? Just take the example of the general block or just even Hunter's example and replace X there by complex coordinates that it will give you, for example. But globally, the eigenvalue must necessarily be closed, which also explains that uh, one can split out, provided the manifold is closed, complex eigen, eigenvalue completely. Uh, idea of proof, uh, the entries of the matrix are holomorphic functions, and they kind of do not expect to live on closed manifold, yeah, provided they are constant. Uh, the proof, of course, should be modified because entries are holomorphic functions, but they are not functions, they are, they are kind of uh, entries of tensor, yeah, but still uh, the phenomena survives. At certain point, maximum principle is used. Uh, let me just give some probably most big, uh, simple uh, corollaries, eigenvalues of nine hertz operator on four-dimensional sphere <coughs> are all real. So few topological statement about nine hertz operator. Uh, topology is important. On other manifolds there are uh, nine hertz operator with complex eigenvalues. And maybe one more simple uh, corollary. If you take the three sphere, then all eigenvalues of uh, L genetic compact. Well, simply all eigenvalues are real. You don't need genetic compact with L, it came from other life, yeah? All eigenvalues of L are real, yeah? So this one should be take, taken out, yeah? So it's just pure statement is uh, nine hertz geometry without assumptions on anything. But now, question yeah but now I come back to projective equivalence to geodesic compatible pairs and uh, discuss projective equivalence is L has journal block so I just throw the formula the only message behind the formula is that we do have description and it's expected to, that we do have description because uh, L is described this uh, we described L 
and we have some linear equations for genetic equivalence. Linear equations are easy to solve. Maple does it. Yeah. So the trick is, of course, to do it in all generality without Maple, but uh, the answer is here. So this down, this lower part of the formula is what you have seen before. It was description of nine house operator with one journal block. And this is a metric, generally compatible with L. Probably some exercise is to see that this metric is, uh, that L is self-adjoint with respect to G, which you don't see immediately, but it is also the case. Uh, the first theorem of my lecture was spin theorem, and let me now formulate the general spin principle. Suppose nine house operator L has a partner geometric structure. So example I had so far a geodetic compatible metric, but there are some other natural associated object which come in particular in the third lecture. Suppose now L has product structure in a coordinate system, and we know that locally L always has product structure provided it has different eigenvalues. Then one might expect that the splitting induced splitting of the partner structure as well. It is principle. It is principle is a question one need to ask. And uh, I will ask this question, I will ask it, and I demonstrate positive answer in the example we have, and it always will be positive answer. So how it works projective equivalence? The theorem actually was proved before. You start the program. So suppose G1 L1 and G2 L2 are geodesic compatible pairs. This one leaves on M1, this one leaves on M2. Uh, algebraic condition is eigenvalues of L1 and eigenvalues of L2 are all different. There is no clash of eigenvalues of first and second one. So, I mean, no eigenvalues of L1 is eigenvalues of L2. Then, consider the following pair. G in this pair is given by this formula. I go to the blackboard for, in a second. I just write down the formula once more. And L in this pair is just block diagonal with L1, L2. So let me just write down this formula on the blackboard in the matrix form, provided somebody help me until I oh, know it's, 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 it's this one is fine. So this G is block diagonal. So the block stain here is G1 multiplied by something. The block stain here is G2 multiplied by something. And something here is L1 plugged in characteristic polynomial of L2. And here other way around. So the coordinates is now mixed because the polynomial of L2 depends on the second portion of coordinate and other way around, but still there is a splitting structure. And thank you very much again for the question, what is function of matrix, yeah? You see polynomial of matrix. Moreover, any power compatible to uh, this operator, to this L, which is block, just one block, L1, second block, is can be constructed by this form. Uh, so we see that uh, in order to describe, for example, projective matrix uh, corresponding to multi-block nine house operator, it's sufficient to do it with one block. And I did it uh, for journal block in the previous slide. Uh, probably as exercise, let us see that the levitch theorem, which I proved in the first lecture, can be obtained in this, uh, as a corollary of the theorem, I will do it for simplicity in dimension two, assuming we have two blocks, each of them has dimension one, but the, uh, the generation for higher dimension is straightforward. So take one dimensional 
d1 and one dimensional, I mean, you have any choice of function, yeah? Another, it, it is just only one dimensional block, yeah? Now, L1, take this one. So we have take X1, and this is, I mean, it is one times one matrix with only entry is X1, yeah? And the two is the same, and X2 is here. Then what is Hredipilon uh, value two? It is second derivative X2, so second, second coordinate minus T, and plug in L here, gives you x2 minus x1. So similar other term is x1 minus x2 times the one times one block. And then the metric looks this form, which is up to the signs. Signs can be controlled by changing the function alpha two is the levita chivita theorem in dimension two, yeah? So, it is proof that this one admits uh, compatible pair, which is actually diagonal matrix, diagonal L with X1 in the first, first, first place, X2 in the second, second place. But because the theorem is uh, if and only if, moreover, any pair compatible has this form, it is a proof also in the other direction. Uh, so what stays here as a frame title is, uh, Journal stain, stain, which they to tell in many occasions. The translation is once one have a reason to celebrate, let us do it, yeah? So let us kind of celebrate what we achieved in the theory of project so far, because indeed I explain a solution of a classical problem, which I now uh, kind of uh, go with her story. So the solution is as follows. Uh, first of all, we have proved that if G and G bar are projective equivalent, then GL with L constructed by G bar and G using some formula, which I have shown you before, there was kind of uh, G bar, G inverse, and then determinants, is uh, G compatible. Then in the neighborhood of all the point, L splits in the product of blocks, such that block has only one real to copies conjugate eigenvalues. Uh, for such one blocks, generic combined matrix can be described. And description is easy. I kind of uh, have shown this, how it works in special cases, but in each of those cases, it could be described straightforwardly. For one dimensional blocks, there's nothing to do. Every G is compatible. For general block, the answer I have given in my lecture. Uh, for complex eigenvalue, it's also done. I put here the reference, so BM is usual boast of myself. Pukako, Pukako. Uh, somebody from Italy should, come, uh, should uh, correct my pronunciation. Uh, it was joint result with them. Uh, for general blocks, this complex eigenvalue is also done with Alexei Bolsonov. Uh, for eigenvalues with bigger geometric multiplicity, it follows from some non-trivial result of Charles Bubel from Strasbourg. And then spin of S induce spin of Gs, and then this, that, and that results give us a complete local description, even in the form of normal form, up to local coordinate changes of genetic compatible pairs, GL, in the neighborhood of almost every point. So, the problem which we, whose solution just explained is explicitly asked by Beltrami. Uh, do we have Italians in the audience? Yes? Can you translate it for us? So the second generalization, our problem. Can you elaborate on the word report? Uh, you said report. Yes, yes. Describe? Okay, no. uh, my, my attempt to translate this follows. Is it correct? Yes. Intify, yeah? Intify, yeah? Okay, so, well, 
I mean, two dimensional, and for Beltrami, surfaces were embedded surfaces. But besides this, what stays here, it's uh, just the Italian should confirm it is correct, yeah? So Beltrami explicitly asked to describe all, well, two dimensional, but case we had multi dimensional example as well, uh, pairs of geodetic fluid matrix. Actually, two dimensional version was solved by. Uh, I forgot his first name, Dini. Ulisse 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 Dini, yeah? Thank you. And this, this, this answer I have given on the previous li uh, slide, I kind of um, said it is Levichivita, but two dimensional version of was already done by Dini. Uh, so the remaining case was actually studied, especially in the context of general relativity, so people which cite uh, general relativity. So Graham Hall is one who just wrote many papers. Uh, Zinoy Petrov uh, from well, Soviet Union, so he started in Kazan, then uh, his last position was in Kiev. Uh, so uh, the case, the two-dimensional case, I mean, the only signature which exists there besides the main are Lorentzian. And actually, he got a quite big prize. Financially, it's better than Fields. Uh, for the, for this result, there were, there were also a number of front solution reported. The most famous one is by Aminova. And actually, the main version, the solution preserved, was solved just quite recently. And actually, though it appeared before Nine House German pro program, it was essentially solved by Nine House program method. It was motivation for them, and they indeed first proved that uh, associated L is uh, Nine House. And then uh, we proved the splitting lemma for nine house, and then we proved the result. So uh, the rest of my talk will be about global. It again will relate to project view metrics, and this is the following theorem. It's two-dimensional one to make, make me uh, to allow me to make pictures. This follows. Uh, suppose G and G bar are project view metrics. I assume that our manifold is closed, which implies that it is a torus if they have non Riemannian signature. Uh, assume that they are not proportional with a the constant coefficient, then and, uh, that the metric G doesn't have a killing vector field. Then there exists a Riemannian metric projected into G. Riemannian matrix we described in the previous lectures, I will repeat the description which means that we do have a complete description of project field matrix to torus, uh, saying that we solve again some modification of the time problem. It's two-dimensional, but the, ma the manifold is global, compact, and the matrix is of any signature. No, 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 none of them. So there remain any signature. The point is that the signature is arbitrary. Yes, it's a signature is one one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So one can take them. One can take the linear combination. I mean, properly understood linear combination, such that it will be Riemannian everywhere. Uh, and Riemannian genetic compatible G were described before, so I will come to the description later. Uh, one of the Output possible output theorem is that we have a kill vector field. Uh, it is a special science. Uh, the, mat the matrix uh, in dimension two on the torus admin kill vector field were, uh, is, were studied by different authors. Um, there is a quite easy local description which I wrote in this paper, but in fact, it's a bit science if you want to go to the no local normal form, if you want them up to diffeomorphism, then, then uh, there is a uh, non-trivial result on Pierre Manu in this di direction. Uh, it's again a theorem which was proved before we started the um, program, and when I discussed it with the people doing Lorentz and dimensional geometry, there is some these people, they were surprised because they kind of said that the, the proof is too complicated, yeah? So they didn't trust in, in my proof. Uh, so I explained using non-house geometry, and this would be 
kind of dunnable, yeah? Uh, I will use in the result two new results. So one of them is published 23. And you will see that the steps of proof will be similar to the proof in the remaining case. So it will, go with this, it will use the same ideas. Uh, the last thing I would like to comment here is why the torus, because topology, it can uh, close manifold with metric of split signature cannot exist on any set by torus. Well, on client battles, okay, but you know, uh, the earlier characteristic must be zero. Uh, let me now show global example. So the timing is... Uh, I was very good with time yesterday, but today it did not work well. Let me go to the global example and then decide what to do. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe just kill this part of lectures. No, I, I, I changed my mind. I will just go to the statement from Nine Hills Germany I was used. And so sorry for just jumping over the picture. And this is a statement. So it is a statement from pure Nine Hills geometry. Yeah. It's indeed too much which I packed in the Lecture. No, this is a statement from Nanhill's geometry. And I have one more minute to formulate it, so let me do it. So suppose M is a close connected Nanhill's manifold, L is a, a Nanhill's operator, and there is condition here, which is called gel regularity, which I will not explain now, but I will, I promise to explain it in the next lecture because I will use it in the next lecture as well. Then there is one of the following possibilities. M is orientable and L is essentially complex structure, uh, complex structure times constant plus identity. Complex structure in dimension two always exists. We have heard here in the lecture of U, right? It was today lecture. Complex structure always exists on, on surfaces. In this case is about complex. Yeah? Uh, the Identities, it's fine, yeah? And this is has com complex entity scoring system, so it's kind of house. Uh, or it's torus Klein bottle, and L has two distant real eigenvalues, or it's homomorphic to a torus, and it is similar to German block approach L2. Or homomorphic to torus or Klein bottle, and one of eigenvalues of L is constant. Uh, now, In the first case, the eigenvalues of L are constant, which implies that trace of L is constant. In this case, genetic compatibility equation, which was given by this formula, this guy disappear. We attain that L is parallel tensor, which in dimension two, exists of parallel tensor, implies that the metric is flat. In case two, one can show that one can find remaining metric in the class particular metrics. In K3, it is similar to general block. I have shown you the formula for genetic compatible uh, metric to it. One would write globally on the whole manifold and see it doesn't survive. So it doesn't have periodicity properties. And in case four, in the case eigenvalue of L is constant, there exists a killing vector field. Uh, I will stop now. Uh, thank you very much for staying until the end of the lecture, and I will continue in two days. We'll begin the last lecture.